Hello there and welcome to Lake Update. Lake Powell has made headlines in recent years thanks to shockingly low water levels. Earlier this year, it reached its lowest level since filling up after Glen Canyon Dam was built. Although the lake is expected to rise approximately 50 to 90 feet this year because of runoff from record snowpack, it won't be enough to fill the reservoir completely. Still, the surge in water this year is welcome news to many people. We see that this year is really buying us time to solve these bigger problems, said Ben Burr. No one can take for granted that we might not revert back to more drought-like conditions. Burr is executive director of the Blue Ribbon Coalition, a non-profit group focused on protecting recreation access to public land and water. The group has tried to counter the claim that Lake Powell is disappearing and nothing can be done about it. I mean, we definitely saw lake water level decrease, and so people started to contemplate that this could potentially mean that Lake Powell isn't a viable reservoir, said Burr. I don't agree with it. Burr's group is behind a policy proposal called Fill Lake Powell, the path to 3588. It's a road map for setting a target elevation for the lake at 3,588 feet, at which the group says all major recreation and marina facilities can be open. We said let's plan for that, said Burr. Recreation is a multi-billion dollar economy around Lake Powell. That's an important use and an important part of our economy and culture here in the States in this area. So we developed a plan around that number. Burr says the number also preserves other purposes of the reservoir, like power generation and water storage. Burr and his allies say recreational considerations haven't received as much attention as they should in discussions around problems facing the reservoir. Recreation has grown to be such a juggernaut of an industry in the western states that it needs to at least have a seat at the table, said Burr. It doesn't need to be the only seat and the only voice. But up until now, it's kind of been an afterthought. The recreation users have taken it for granted and the land planning and water planning managers often don't even consider recreation as a top-level priority in what they're doing. Lake Powell and its sister reservoir downstream, Lake Mead, have become a challenging dilemma for the U.S. federal government. The reservoirs play a crucial role in allocating water rights to states in the Colorado River Basin. As drought has reduced capacity, cuts have had to be made. Critics of Burr's proposal say there's simply not enough water to go around, let alone fill Lake Powell to an elevation of 3,588 feet. Burr disagrees. There's still a lot of water there, said Burr. We still have all the infrastructure to manage it. We think that with better plans, they can still manage the system to maintain the viability of all the major reservoirs that are in the system. The Blue Ribbon Coalition turned to John Rickenbach for the science behind their proposal. Rickenbach is an environmental and planning consultant with 30 years of experience in water issues. The concept of the death of Lake Powell, it's a compelling idea when you see the rain becoming less and less over the years and the snowpack diminishing, said Rickenbach. But the truth of the matter is that Lake Powell and Lake Mead in the whole Colorado River system, like it or not, was designed for fluctuations up and down. We're seeing some extreme down and it could become worse than that. But right now, we're not to the point where you'd say it's imminently going away. Rickenbach maintains that reducing water consumption across the affected seven states and Mexico would be enough to increase water levels at Lake Powell and reach the 3,588 feet target. Rickenbach says a reduction in agricultural water use can go an especially long way. You look at the Imperial Irrigation District in California, Rickenbach uses as an example. That is essentially 75 to 80 percent of California's water share that goes into one irrigation district. Rickenbach says reducing the use there by half, an arbitrary number, would essentially solve the problem. When the Glen Canyon Institute or others would say that the lakes are draining themselves, that's not thinking it through holistically, said Rickenbach. It is true if we don't change other aspects of the reality out there. Rickenbach also agrees this year's snowpack runoff is simply buying some time. This bought us a year to not have to worry about a massive crisis, he said. But it's not time to get complacent. The states still need to come together and work together to reduce use, and the Bureau of Reclamation needs to adjust its management practices accordingly. Neither Burr nor Rickenbach deny long-term climate trends that may further reduce water in the Colorado River Basin. But they still maintain savings elsewhere can lead to more water in Lake Powell and Lake Mead. 
I think with the right management, we can keep very high levels of water in both reservoirs, which will maintain a thriving recreation economy, thriving agricultural economy, thriving cities and towns, and it's something we need to strive toward, said Burr. Just this week, the states of California, Arizona, and Nevada reached a historic deal to cut billions of gallons of Colorado River water usage in hopes of avoiding a crisis of water levels at Lake Powell and Lake Mead. The three states would cut about 10% of their water allocation in exchange for federal funding. The plan must still be finalized after a federal government review. The other four states that use Colorado River water, Colorado, Wyoming, Utah, and New Mexico, didn't endorse the plan itself. But they did signal support for reviewing the plan to reach a final deal.